<sighs> so, this is King Kong Lives, which is the sequel to the 1976 King Kong movie produced by Dino De Laurentiis. This one is once again produced by Dino De Laurentiis, directed by the same director, but was released and set 10 years later. None of the cast members from the original came back. No Jeff Bridges, no Jessica Lange. And the movie picks up, as I mentioned, 10 years after the original, where Kong has apparently survived his fall from the World Trade Center after being shot to death by helicopters. Funny, because in the original, he fell off a smaller skyscraper and didn't get shot up as much by the airplanes as he did here, but why am I trying to argue logic with a movie about a giant gorilla? Apparently, Kong has been in a coma for 10 years and is at a university in Atlanta where a scientist, played by Linda Hamilton, is trying to save Kong's life by replacing his heart. Problem is, he needs a blood donation, and there's no other animal in the world that has Kong's blood type. That is, until an explorer, played by Brian Kerwin, finds a female Kong, which he's dubbed Lady Kong. So Kong is given blood, he's given a new heart, then he soon breaks free, joins up with the female Kong, and the rest of the movie is them, for lack of a better word, monkeying around while the military tries to kill them. Pretty dumb plot, I gotta say. Now, to be honest, I had a difficult time watching this movie. I mean, for one, it's a piece of shit. I'm just gonna get that out of the way right now. This movie is garbage. But the other reason is that this movie was actually really, really hard to come by. And in fact, I'm even wondering how many people even know of this movie's existence. The 1976 movie was really forgettable, so I'm willing to bet not many people even know about this movie. It was actually really hard to find a copy of this movie. I checked on on iTunes to see if I could rent it. Uh, wasn't available. I checked Amazon Video where they had the 1976 movie. Uh, not there either. Uh, I checked Netflix, both the streaming and the DVD portion of the site. Wasn't there either. And I know the DVD is available on regular Amazon, but I'm not spending $20 on King Kong Lives. You've got to be out of your damn mind. So I went to the one place in town where I knew that they'd have a DVD of it. That was Amoeba Music. If there is any place in LA where I could find a DVD copy of King Kong Lives, it would be Amoeba Music. I got a ton of great rare DVDs or hard to find Blu-rays at Amoeba Music. And I did find a DVD of King Kong Lives. Too little too late, because the first time I went there, they didn't have the DVD. It wasn't until yesterday where I went back and saw that they did have the DVD. But by that time, I've already found King Kong Lives on the internet and already watched it. So, a little too late, but at least you can always trust Amoeba. This is not at all a commercial for Amoeba music. Just saying that. They are not paying me to say this. Now, on to the actual review for this movie. Like I said, this is dog shit. This is a terrible, terrible movie. And yet, at the same time, I'm going to say that this movie will not get the Burn in Hell rating. I always reserve that rating for a movie that truly makes me angry, like truly pisses me off, like Roland Emmerich's Godzilla, or Michael Bay's Transformers, or Batman vs. Superman. Movies like that will really piss me off. But this one... It's just plain bad. Now, if you remember my review for the 70s King Kong, I actually was fair to it. I said some of the special effects were actually really good. Jeff Bridges does have charisma. As stupid as Jessica Lange's character is, she is kind of likable at points. This movie has none of that. Anything good that I said about the 70s movie, I can't say about this one. It's just like... Everything from that movie got downgraded into King Kong Lives. Uh, the King Kong suit and Lady Kong suit in this movie are so cheap. Uh, they look like one of those really cheap ape suits that you'd find at Target or Walmart. They're that bad. If you look at the 70s suit, you can tell that there's a lot of articulation in the eyes, the mouth, uh, and you can always tell what this Kong is thinking. And compared to King Kong Lives, it just looks so fake, it makes the Toho suits look a little better by comparison. Okay, if I'm to be totally fair, the Toho suits are still fake, but here's the thing. Those movies were made in the 60s, in Japan, 
So it was kind of acceptable back then uh, because technology was what it was back then in Japan. This movie came out in 1986. By this time, we've already seen great creature effects like Chewbacca, Jabba the Hutt, The Terminator, the Xenomorph Alien. Even the 70s King Kong looked really good. The suits here are just so bad. There is a motion in these Kong suits, but it's really minimal and really creepy looking as well. Even creepier than it was in the 70s version. And it's ironic considering that the 76 movie won the Academy Award for Best Special Effects, well deserved considering what they worked with at the time, whereas this movie, made 10 years later, won the Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Special Effects, because these Kong suits don't even look like they're in the same continuity as the 70s remake. It's just so, so bad. Also, the sound effects for these two Kongs are just laughable. The 76 movie had animalistic sound effects. This one just sounds like one asshole making ape noises. It's like... And it sounds really like the same guy doing the sound effects for both Kongs. The only way you can really tell the difference is that Lady Kong has red hair and regular Kong has black hair. Every character in this movie is downright dull. There is no charismatic actor in this movie at all. And as much as I've criticized Jessica Lange's character, you will miss her ditziness because it at least gave her some sort of personality. Not so much with these characters. Brian Kerwin and Linda Hamilton look damn bored out of their minds, especially Linda Hamilton, who did this two years after she did The Terminator. And to think, Arnold Schwarzenegger would go on to do Commando, Predator, Michael Bean would go on to do Aliens and The Abyss. Linda Hamilton? King Kong lives. So she really got the short end of the stick in that deal. Now I gotta say that these characters aren't unlikable. There's nothing about them that you go, man, those characters are awful. They're too boring to really hate or like them. Huh? And a lot of the other side characters are cartoon characters, especially the military leader who is the quote, villain of the movie, trying to hunt down the two Kongs. Dialogue doesn't help anything either. You get lines like, we should have no trouble finding the enemy. They're 50 feet tall and wearing their birthday suits. Oh, I'm sorry, what? Who in the military actually says that? Huh? And there's just some other downright stupid, stupid moments. Like when Linda Hamilton is about to perform the heart replacement for Kong, you see a lot of these other scientists grabbing human-sized operating tools. And you're just like, what are you going to do with those human-sized items against a 50-foot gorilla who's about to get a heart transplant that's this big? What are you going to do with those items? You're just stupid. Another really stupid scene comes from the end when Lady Kong is about to go into labor because she's pregnant with a child and she's sitting in a barn. It's going into labor like a regular human would. So she's in pain. She's like breathing heavily and then pops out this little ape that's about the size of a human adult. Really? You went through all that labor just to poop out something that you could have done in a snap of a finger? And the reveal they have for Kong's son in this movie is so cliched. You can actually find this scene on YouTube, and I guarantee you will laugh at how ridiculous it is. Now I'm going to end things right here and right now because there isn't really much else to say about King Kong Lives. I tried. I tried to think of something positive to say about the movie. And... I honestly cannot think of one that isn't a backhanded compliment. And that backhanded compliment is that there are points in this movie that are so bad they're good. So you might be able to enjoy it on that level if you had uh, that right level of beer and pot. But other than that, don't waste your money on this at all. Outside of the fact that it's actually pretty hard to come across, it's just not good at all. It's downright laughable. And this is one of the very few movies out there to get a 0% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, along with such movies like Jaws the Revenge and Bucky Larson Born to be a Star. That kind of shows you how bad this movie is. So again, I don't hate it. There are some scenes that I could watch and laugh because of how stupid it is. But other than that, uh, just don't waste your money. 
And that's my review for King Kong Lives. We got one more Kong movie to talk about before the release of Kong Skull Island, and that is the Peter Jackson remake from 2005. I am really looking forward to that one. So until then, I hope you enjoyed this review. Leave a comment down below and tell me what your thoughts are on King Kong Lives, if you've seen it. Huh? I'm not going to assume that you have. Huh? And until then, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one.